talked with leaders from both the environmental community and industry about two of my top priorities for the 2009 legislative session, transportation and climate change. Neither is new to my agenda. I've been laying out a new vision for both since my earliest days as governor. That's why we have already made major new investments in public infrastructure, including airports, seaports, and rail, as well as renewable energy. On the green energy front, we already have a renewable electricity and a renewable fuel standard that are among the most aggressive in the nation. But those of you who have been listening to me in recent months know, I believe, we must ramp up our investments in green transportation while making even bigger cuts in greenhouse gases. I said last December at the Economic Leadership Summit, and I made the same point last month in my State of the State Address, building a transportation system well suited to the needs of the 21st century and addressing the indisputable threat of climate change would both be worth doing even if neither one affected our economy. But of course, as you know, they do. The fact is, addressing the issues around transportation and climate change are critical to our success in the global marketplace and maintaining our quality of life. Crunch the numbers any way you like. The bottom line is still the same. Businesses need to be able to move goods quickly and easily. Families need to spend less time in traffic and more time together. And every citizen of this state needs to escape the danger of higher temperatures, less snowpack, fewer fish, and dangerous storms. And we must all work together to maintain the quality of life we enjoy as Oregonians. Here's the problem when we discuss, when the discussion turns to building public infrastructure and cutting greenhouse gases. Supporters of each line up, face each other, and assume they're involved in a zero-sum game. I said this in the state of the state, and I'll say it again. We cannot allow ourselves to fall into the trap of thinking of transportation and climate change as conflicting policy choices. They're not. We can do both, and we must do both. Let me be specific. We can invest in transportation and face up to the challenge of climate change. We can create living wage jobs and reduce greenhouse gases. We can have a modern infrastructure and sustainable economic growth. And maybe most important, we can have a green economy and maintain our quality of life. The challenge going forward is to engage the public so they understand the importance of transportation and climate change to our economy, to our quality of life, and to our children's future. As I've already suggested, left unchecked, climate change will bring more frequent and severe storms, flooding, and severe damage to our farms, forests, and fisheries. And on top of the harm to our food, water supplies, and natural landscape, the state will end up paying untold millions because of damage to our roads, bridges, and railroads. This will not only hurt our economy, it will compromise the safety of our citizens. As for transportation, the status quo is unacceptable. It is also unsustainable. If nothing changes, our current transportation network will become even more inadequate as our population grows and the demands of the global economy 
increase. So for me, climate change and transportation are not in conflict, just the opposite. They work in concert with each other. And while it will be a challenge to improve and diversify our transportation infrastructure, while reducing our overall carbon footprint, this is the challenge we are capable of meeting. It is also the challenge that creates great opportunities for our Oregon and its citizens. In particular, opportunities for new and sustainable businesses, more family wage jobs, renewable energy production, innovative green technology, and national leadership in sustainable development. The question before us today is, how do we build a diverse, safe, and sustainable transportation system while reducing greenhouse gas emissions and advancing policies that roll back our carbon footprint? Let me start my answer by saying, as you know, if there is one state that can accomplish both of these goals, it is Oregon. A healthy environment, a great quality of life, respect for nature's bounty, balance we are as a people, and the business community is no exception. Country and world on how to ensure that we have energy security and a transportation system that serves people and businesses while promoting a healthy environment. In December, I established three committees to focus on developing a comprehensive, long-term, and sustainable transportation plan for introduction in the 2009 legislative session. Many members of these committees are in this room today. So let me first take the opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you for volunteering your time and expertise on this critical issue. Each committee, the Vision Committee, the Governor's Committee, and Public Awareness Committee have been hard at work developing ideas that will make our system more efficient, strategic, and responsive. This is what businesses and citizens want. More transportation choices with less harm to our environment. The Vision Committee is specifically charged charged with mapping out a transportation package that meets the needs of our business and citizens with respect to our environment. The committee is chaired by Pat Wright. I have asked the committee to think about the issue of transportation through the lens of climate change. Yes, we need more access points to our transportation system so trucks can more efficiently and safely move freight up and down I-5. But if our only answer is highway expansion and not a multi-modal solution, then we are taking a step backward on climate warming. I know, I know that this is not acceptable to you and I want each and every one of you to know it is absolutely not acceptable to me. 